Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. James Gill and you've joined me for another clinical skills video. Today we're doing a, another uh, pregnancy related video. We're going to be assessing the symphysial fundal height. So this is a way of assessing the growth of uh, the fetus. So we could be looking at the upper end of the scale. We could have macrosomia, so an enlarged fetus. We could, however, have the bottom end of the scale, small for gestational age, where we've got a baby who is staying small all the way across uh, the pregnancy. There is one that's slightly more in the middle, so fetal growth restriction, where the baby has been growing normally and then seems to have plateaued for some reason. And that's one of the reasons being able to do this examination is very important, because it's not a one-off. We're going to do serial measurements across the pregnancy so we can track uh, the growth of the fetus and plot it against a, a growth curve that is specific for uh, the age and ethnicity of the mother. And that'll give us a 50% uh, a average, it'll give us a lower quartile and an upper quartile, which we'll go over in some of the graphs with this fetus in a little bit. So in terms of starting off, we want to make sure that we uh, gel our hands and uh, we're going to uh, introduce ourselves and confirm the patient's date, and, uh, date of birth. Hello, my name's Dr Gill. I've been asked to do a, a symphysial fundal height examination on yourself. So essentially we're going to be looking at how the baby's growing. Uh, but before we go any further, could I please confirm your name and date of birth? Yes, Stephanie Gill. Um, and my date of birth is 10th of August 1993. So what this is going to involve us doing, if you don't mind, we're going to get you to lie flat and then we're going to put the ultrasound probe on your tummy in order to listen to the baby's heartbeat. It's good for you because you get to hear it, which is always nice and reassuring, but it's good for us because then we are able to assess the health of the baby you know, from that so we can see that the baby doesn't seem to be any distress. Once we've done that, what we'll, then we'll do is we'll measure from low down in your pelvis up to the top of the womb. And in terms of doing that, I'm going to have to press quite low down on your pelvis. Are you happy for me to go ahead with that? Yes. And that is an incredibly important part about this examination. So you're going to, you're going to be getting just above uh, the vagina. So you're going to be pressing over the symphysis pubis. Hence, we're doing the symphysial fundal height. And you know this is an incredibly personal private area so we must make sure we've gained adequate consent before we press down there and we need to highlight that with um, the the uh, the womb with the increased size of the abdominal circumference a the patient might need to empty their bladder beforehand but also it might be a little bit uncomfortable so we need to warn them about that so just to reiterate, I'm going to be pressing quite low down on, on your pelvis uh, in a very personal area. Obviously, we've got the chaperone as well. Are you happy for me to continue doing that? Yes. Okay. Now, it can be a little bit sore, and some ladies, because of where we're pressing, often need to go to the toilet. So, do you need to uh, go to the past urine before we start? Not currently. Super. So, we're going to get you to lie down if you're comfortable, and we'll do the uh, assessment. Okay. So, if you'll just sit forward somewhat slightly, <coughs> and I'm just going to move up the pillow for you. So if you want to relax down, okay, and I can get you to raise things up for me. Okay, and we're just assessing uh, the abdomen as we do so. So we can see here that we've got the uh, linea negra. So this is a due to a rise in MSM, so melanocyte stimulating hormone, and. Essentially, it means that we've got more melanocytes, more pigmented cells in the skin. And we don't quite know why this rises in pregnancy, but we think it's due to fetal development and growth. As well as this dark line on the uh, abdomen, we can also see the same occasionally happening with the face, called melasma of pregnancy, and some patients will comment of darkening of the nipple. All three of those changes, however, should resolve with pregnancy. So with the, um, the patient lying back, uh, we want to do Leopold's manoeuvres first. So we're going to find if the head is engaged and we're going to identify where the shoulder is on the baby. As we've seen on our previous fetal Doppler, we want to make sure we're listening through the shoulder here. So in terms of doing Leopold's manoeuvres, I'm going to start off actually assessing the fundal height. So I'm going to use the leading edge of my index finger to press down across the abdomen until I come across an indent here, the shelf of the uterus, which I can feel against my finger. Then I want to feel on the sides to determine which way uh, the baby is facing. 
So pressing down and around, down and around, down and around, down and around. Okay, so I've got definite smoothness on this side, whereas I've got, for want of a better phrase, knobbly bits over here. So I think I'm looking at the back and I've probably got the legs over here. I'm just going to press down and the baby does feel like there it's engaged, so it's in the bottom end of the pelvis. So we're going to get our probe, we're going to apply the jelly, and because we've identified what we think is the shoulder on this side, we're going to have a quick lesson in. There we go. And because we knew where the shoulder was, we found it straight away, 150 beats per minute, a nice gallop rhythm we can hear. And we can try and move around again. Go to a much more whooshing sound, that's a wee bit slower, and now we're listening into the placenta. So we know we've got 75 beats per minute, and a much slower um, uh, beat there, because we're listening to the maternal circulation. So we take those off and grab our ever-present NHS blue roll and we just have to wipe that off. There we go. So with that out of the way, we then need to get our tape measure and we're going to find where the fundal height is. So I'm going to press uh, starting from the top of the abdomen using the leading edge of my index finger and I'm coming down to sort of feel the shelf of where uh, I can feel the top of the uterus. So it's going to have risen up to here. So having roughly assessed where I need to be measuring up to, I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to find the symphysis pubis. So again, are you happy for me to feel down low? Yes. Okay, so I can feel the bony hardness. I'm going to take my tape measure using the blank side of the tape measure facing upwards. I'm going to press and then go along to where I found that um, that indent. Okay, and then we turn the tape measure over and that's showing me 33 centimetres ish. And we're going to do that three times. So again, pressing the symphysal fundal height and pressing across. Okay, and having a look, so I've got 34 centimetres there. And once more. And again, I've got 34 centimetres. So we're going to take the larger of those, the 34 centimetres, which we'll now, now plot on uh, the growth chart. Um, but obviously we want to make sure we cover up the patient. So can I help you sit up? Super. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So obviously the mother's going to be wanting to know what uh, those measurements mean. So we're going to quickly put those uh, on the sheet and then bring that data back. So from the measurements that we've just done, so these are your uh, growth curves and we can see there are previous uh, measurements already and we are measuring slightly above the upper centaur given that we are 34 weeks pregnant at the moment. Um, so given where we are here and that that's tracking up, it's probably not unreasonable for us to get a, an ultrasound to actually confirm these measurements because if this is carrying on tracking, um, then that might affect the actual birth, the delivery, and some of the choices we have to make with that. So are you happy for me to do that referral? Yes. Superb. Well, thank you very much for your time. Do you have any questions for myself based upon that? No. Super. Well, thank you very much. So it's very important at all stages of uh, this uh, examination to remember that we're not just dealing with the patient's own body. There's going to be all of those extra worries about who and what they're carrying inside. So if you do find something that's outside normal, you know, think about how you're going to phrase that and explain what's going on to the patient and your demeanour and tone when you're doing that so as not to cause excess worry. So I hope that's been a useful um, in, uh, video for yourself. Uh, drop any comments down below you've got and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.